A useful decision-making shortcut based on the broader community as a guide is known as the disclosure rule. This practical shortcut is widely used by managers and executives. The disclosure rule asks, how would you feel if your behavior appeared on blank? Fill in the blank with a particular media outlet. Is it the front page of the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, your hometown newspaper, 60 Minutes, CNN? The assumption behind the disclosure rule is that community standards do exist for most situations, and at a gut level, most of us know what those are. If our gut tells us that it would not look good to have your behavior appear on one of these media outlets, you simply shouldn't be doing it. If your goal is to be considered a person of integrity, another useful question is to ask yourself how your harshest moral critic or ethical role model would advise you. Who serves in that role for you? Is it someone in your family or a respected teacher, coach, or spiritual advisor? Identify your strongest ethical role model or harshest moral critic and consider what this individual would think of the behavior you're contemplating. Finally, a, virtual a virtue ethics perspective assumes that your identity as a moral actor is important to you and that you are devoted to conscientiously developing that aspect of yourself. Being an ethical person is an important part of who you are. Those who have made such commitments know that life and careers present ongoing ethical challenges and opportunities to work on ethical aspects of them. Are you following an ethical fitness program by practicing good behavior over time and developing good habits? Just as an exercise program challenges your muscles, balance, and coordination, an ethical fitness program challenges your ethical thinking and leads to improvement. Such ethical fitness programs can help you develop your comfort with speaking up on behalf of your values. It also reinforces your view of yourself as a person of integrity and contributes to improving your, your ethical fitness over time. We have looked at utilitarian, deontological, and virtue ethics approaches. These are just a few of the philosophical approaches that may be applied in ethical dilemmas. I've introduced the approaches I believe have the most practical benefit to business managers. All of the approaches have limitations. None of them by themselves provide perfect guidance in every situation. Obviously, if all the approaches lead to the same solution, the decision is relatively easy. The tough ones arise when the approaches conflict. What happens when that happens it will be up to you to consider the situation comprehensively and make the best decision you can based on the societal good, your most important values and principles, and consideration of what a person of integrity would do. Here's a case study, the burning building. Assume you approach a burning building and hear voices coming from both ends, each singing help, seeking help. Assume the fire is burning so rapidly, you only have time to go to one end or the other of the building. Initially, you hear multiple voices at one time at one end of the building and one voice at the other end. Which way do you go? Why? Now let's add some additional information. The sole voice is that of your daughter, your father, your mother, etc. Do you still choose to go to the end with multiple voices? If not, why not? What has changed? What will the different approaches advise?